Welcome to Ground Control. Hey, is she a beauty or what? The brushless conversion is complete. That is fantastic. And it still looks pretty good. I did mess up the paint a little bit on the top. I had some excess glue squeezing up through the top. And stupid me, I grabbed a paper napkin and wiped it off and actually damaged the paint. So, other than that, if I hadn't done that, it would actually look pristine. You probably wouldn't be able to tell that I'd cut it open and glued it back together. It's one of my cleanest projects that I have kept, I have completed in a brushless conversion. Okay, so I've already tested everything after I got it all assembled, got the motor mounted, but we'll go ahead and plug a battery into it before we close out here, just so you can see that everything is working and it is almost ready to launch. Uh, I got some notes here. Let me, let me start off with the notes so I don't forget anything. This project is just as much about the brush to brushless module as it is the conversion of this plane. Now, I wanted to convert this plane to brushless because it's such a good airframe. You know, even in the even with the stock setup, I mean, it was underpowered, but it was a very excellent airframe. I mean, it flew very well. I don't know if you guys have watched one of the videos that I published of this where I took it out in quite a bit of wind. I think it was, I think the wind was pushing somewhere around 17 to 18 miles per hour and I was flying it in full manual mode most of the time and this airframe handled it just great. I mean I had an absolute blast with this plane out there flying it in that kind of wind with the stock setup in it, the stock power system. So, but I, before I started performing the brushless conversion on this plane, I did want to wait until I received one of those modules. Uh, when I found out about that module, I held off on the conversion of this plane until I had it in my hands so that I could test it because that module is going to make it easier going forward to perform brushless conversions of these planes because you can use the the, one of the uh, brushed all-in-one boards, you know, that has the receiver, has the gyro, has two servos already installed on it. It makes everything lighter and more compact and you have to fiddle with fewer things. So I'm definitely going to be using those uh, in the future for these ready-to-fly planes for doing brushless conversions. Okay, so my plan was to use my Turner G Plus 6 amp ESC because that thing only weighs like 5.3 grams as opposed to that 12 amp ESC which weighed 12.3 grams and I couldn't figure out what I'd done with it and then I remembered I had taken the King Kong Tiny Wing out not too long ago and flown it and that is what I had my Turner G Plus 6 amp ESC in. So I was going to retire that tiny wing anyway, so I went ahead and pulled the electronics out of it. The, the, six, uh, the six channel standard receiver I had in it, the Turnergy Plus 6 Amp ESC. So I took the Turnergy Plus 6 Amp ESC and I hooked it up to the uh, brush to brushless module and went to run it up and the motor just stuttered. It would never spin. It was almost like it wasn't fully initializing the ESC. You know, like when it's trying to initialize and you get that little movement in the motor, that's all I could get from it. I tried, you know, sometimes you will get that if it can't detect low throttle. So I tried programming the top end and the bottom end of the throttle. I tried, you know, powering up the receiver uh, and, and then plugging the motor into the ESC with the throttle all the way up and it, Nothing I did would get that motor to spin, so I thought, well, I just had that tiny wing in the air with the CSC, it was working fine. So I took the I took the six channel receiver that I pulled out of the tiny wing, I took the six amp ESC, I took this motor, I hooked up to it, bound up to it, and the motor spun up just fine. It was nice and smooth. There was nothing wrong with it. So for whatever reason, that ESC did not want to work with this module. It, you know, when I first hooked it up and tested it, I used the ZTW Mantis 
12 amp ESC and it worked with it just fine. Well, then I started going through my part spin of all my ESCs again, and I did find my Turner G Plus 10 amp ESC. It's 3 grams heavier than the 6 amp ESC, but it's 4 grams lighter than the 12 amp ESC. So I hooked up the Turner G Plus 10 amp ESC to it, and it spun up just fine, not a problem at all. So I don't know what's going on between that 6 amp ESC and the brush to brushless module, but the two do not like each other. So if you get one of these modules um, and, and you're having that kind of issue, try a different ESC. I mean, I've run into these problems in the past with, uh, with different power setups. Sometimes, the, you know, the motor or, or the receiver or whatever it just doesn't work well with a specific ESC. It was really weird that both the 6 amp and the 10 amp are Eternity Plus ESCs and the 6 amp wouldn't work but the 10 amp did. So. It's a head scratcher, but I didn't have time to mess with it any further, so I'm just going to go ahead and go with the 10 amp ESC. Uh, also, if you decide to buy this module, I forgot to mention this in the last video, but when you check out through PayPal, there will be an option to leave a note. You can leave a note and request that the wiring be, be pre-soldered onto that module. And they will do that for you at no additional cost. So I would take advantage of that because that's going to be a time saver. That's um, at least six. That's at least six solder points that you're not going to have to deal with. So I would definitely put in the note, I would say, please pre-solder wires to model. And it's not going to cost you anything extra. So, so take advantage of that. You need to be aware with this V761 board, it's the EAR411, uses the V61 protocol. That is the, the uh, board that this module was specifically designed for. But there's at least two different versions of that. And I don't know if there's anything on the board that will tell you which one it is. Now the board that I used is the one out of the Volantech Sport Cup 500. I went ahead and retired the Sport Cup 500 after I did the brushless conversion of it and went out and flew it a few times and then I, I retired it. So I pulled that, that's the board that I pulled out of that plane before I did the brushless conversion of it. But in, in that, that plane, the gyro is set so that when you put the board in, the board is right side up, me and the servos are pointing up, right? But the one out of the P51D Mustang, the Mini Mustang, it's installed upside down. So you want to make sure that when you order one of those boards, it's for the proper plane. So be aware of that. Otherwise, you know, with, with this plane or a similar plane, you're going to have, you would have to install the board upside down if you want to use the gyro. So <clears throat> make sure you get one that's for the, the uh, Sport Cup 500 and similar planes so that you could install it right side up. Okay. Okay, so I, I ran into an issue with the gyro on this board. It, there's nothing wrong with the gyro on the board, but it's with the setup on the plane. It corrects properly in the proper direction with the ailerons. It corrects properly with the rudder, but it, but it corrects in the, in the uh, wrong position, the opposite position with the elevator, and here's the reason why. On all those planes that I'm familiar with, the mini warbirds like the P-51, the Corsair, and the Volantex Sport Cub 500. The control horn for the elevator is not mounted on the top on those planes, it's mounted on the bottom. So if you're wanting to use that gyro board with this plane, you are going to have to move this control horn from the top of the elevator to the bottom of the elevator or else your elevator is going to be correcting in the wrong position and you don't want that. That renders that gyro pretty much ineffective. So this is also going to require either that, you, well it's, I think it's going to require you're going to have to replace, you're going to have to replace the control linkage because where it's located, it's coming out uh, above the horizontal stabilizer and you want it below the horizontal stabilizer to connect to the control horn down here. Now, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut another little hole down here. 
and I'm just going to move where this rod is coming out of the fuselage to where it's coming out below the horizontal stabilizer rather than above the horizontal stabilizer and that way I can just go ahead and use the existing linkage and then just remove the control horn and install it on the bottom of the elevator instead of the top and then I'll be able to use the gyro and the gyro will be correcting in the proper direction. I did not think of that until I got it all put together. But the, the, you know, it's just one of those things that you run into that you're going to have to correct. Now, all right, so if I have the weather to take this out before I can set aside time to make that modification, then I'll just go ahead and take it out and do the remaining in full manual mode, just play it in full manual mode. And then um, as soon as I have time, assuming that goes well, as soon as I have time, then I'll go ahead and adjust that linkage and move the control horn and then, and then next time I take it out or when I can take it out again after doing that, I'll go ahead and demonstrate it in gyro modes as well. But I'm not, I'm not concerned about not having the gyro working in it, you know, right away because I, I usually fly in full manual mode anyway. So. All right, so I'll go ahead and I'll put up some pictures on the screen to show you what the front mount looks like for mounting the motor on the front of the nose. Um, that is as I planned, as I spoke about in the last video. Now, what I deviated from in installing this motor was rather than rather than having to create another full plate and, and cut out the air inlet and the access to, you know, to bring the uh, cable in from the motor to attach to the ESC, I just went ahead and created a rectangular motor mount to attach the motor to and then attach that to the face plate that I already fabricated glued to the front of the nose. I used the four screws that were left over from the disassembly of the P47, so the two screws that were used to hold the stock gyro receiver board in and the two screws that were used to hold in the on and off switch. Since I wasn't going to be needing those, I went ahead and used all four of those screws to attach that plate to the to that, fr that front receiving plate on the nose. Um, I've got just a slight amount of right angle in the motor, not a whole lot. And I've got just a slight amount of down angle on the motor, but not a whole lot. I didn't want to go overboard with that. I don't know how much angle there was in the original motor. I probably should have tried to measure that before I did this, but I didn't. I didn't think about it. So, I don't know. I may not have enough right angle on the motor. We'll have to see. It's a, it's a smaller diameter prop. I think that the stock prop that was on it was like a 6 inch prop or just under. And this is a five inch prop. But it looks like I should have a sufficient amount of down angle in it. If there's anything that I will have to adjust, it'll probably be the right angle of the motor because I just have a slight amount. But um, it, it should fly with it anyway, I would think. I, I tried to position the motor on that nose plate that I fabricated and glued to it so that um, it had the same thrust line as the original a prop and shaft that were coming out of it. So that hole that was in there where the shaft came out, I tried my best to center the motor mount right in the center of that hole. So the thrust angle on this should be almost exactly the same as what it was stock. I just don't know about the angles. Okay, and so for the receiver board, and I'll show a close up of that too. I wanted to build a shelf in there that I could attach with screws, but I just didn't have enough space, working space inside that fuselage to get that done in a timely manner. So what I did was I just took another piece of that, that scrap gift card stock that I've kept and I just cut out a rectangle out of it. I glued the receiver board, hot glued the receiver board to that plastic shelf and then um, used some E9000 glue to glue the shelf on inside the bottom of the fuselage. It sets just above where the mounts were for the original receiver board so that that's not interfering with it. Okay, so that's what I had to deviate on that. Um, let me see. I'm still a little bit nose heavy the way I have, I mean tail heavy the way I have things 
oriented here right now. So I've got my ESC pushed all the way forward. My battery is back, oh, about right here. So I may have to remove some foam. I may have to remove some foam under this forward section right here so I can get my battery pushed further forward because right now I am I'm still a little bit tail heavy where I have it positioned even with that motor further out and the ESC pushed all the way forward I'm still a little bit tail heavy on this so I'm going to try and get that done today so that if the weather permits I'm going to go out and launch it tomorrow morning Okay, so I'm also going to be adjusting the linkage, not only on the elevator, I'm going to go ahead and on the elevator, I want more movement on the elevator, so this innermost hole is a little bit smaller, and that pin on the clevis will not quite fit through it, so I'm going to drill that out a little bit, and I'm going to move my linkage down to the innermost hole, so I have more movement on the elevator, because with the TX-16S, I can always adjust the dual rate, or increase the expo to soften that up. The ailerons, before I do any modification of the ailerons, you know, extending the ailerons, there's quite a bit of space underneath this innermost hole on this control horn. So what I'm going to do is take some more of my gift card plastic stock. I'm going to, I'm going to glue a section onto this control horn, on the control horns on the ailerons, and drill another hole that's going to be far, farther inboard on this control horn than what I currently have so I can get more movement on the ailerons. And uh, we'll see how that works out because the plane's going to be moving faster through the air. If I can get more movement on the ailerons, that might be sufficient without having to modify the foam. So I want to try that first. And that's not going to be a bad thing to do anyway. So even later on, if that doesn't give me the roll rate I want, I can always go ahead and extend the ailerons out with the additional foam. So, but that would be a, that's going to be a benefit anyway, I think. So that's what I plan on doing with that. I did put it on the scale after I got everything assembled, and it was 112.3 grams all up weight, a little bit heavier than where I thought I was going to be. So I'm basically 12, a little bit less than 12 grams heavier than I was with it stock. What is that? 11.8 11 11 uh, grams? 11.6 11 point, 11 grams. Because I, I think the original all up weight with the stock, everything stock was 100.5 grams, right? Yeah, so. So 11.8, yeah, 11.8 grams heavier. Now, I would have only been 8. 8 grams heavier if I could have used that 6 amp ESC instead of the 10 amp ESC because the 10 amp ESC is 3 grams heavier. But even at 12.3 12, 12 grams heavier than what it was, I, I don't think that's going to be an issue at all because this had this plane did have in the stock configuration at 100.5 grams pretty light wing loading and pretty good slow flight capability. So it probably won't have quite as good slow flight capability or maybe it will since I'll have more thrust coming, you know, from this 2S power system. But we'll have to see. It's definitely going to have a lot more performance. We'll see how the slow flight capability is with it at 112.3 grams. All right, so uh, let me pause it here for a minute, get the battery connected, get the transmitter turned on, and then I'll show you that everything's working. Be back in a minute. Okay, so I think I'm bound up to it, yeah. So I wanted to also mention... Let me know if you guys are interested in the motor mount plate and the motor mount that I created for this. I don't know if you'll be using a 1306 motor or if you'll be using something else that has a different hole pattern. But um, So that would have to be adjusted. But I, did, I always like to make templates for myself in case I need to do something again. So I did make a template for the receiving plate that I mounted on the front of the nose and then I also created a template for the rectangular mount that I used to actually attach the motor to the receiving plate. So if you guys are interested in that, let me know. And if this is successful and you never know, uh, then when I publish the setup file, the OpenTX model file for the brushless version of this plane, I'll, 
I'll try to remember to not only pack in an image of the model file that you can use in a radio like the TX16S, but I'll also try to remember to pack in the template file for the motor mount. Okay, so back to what we were doing. Rudder left, right, left, right. Can you guys see that? Okay, so my rudder is working. Elevator. Elevator is working. And you can see there's not a lot of movement in it, which is why I'm going to relocate that linkage. And then uh, ailerons. Left, right, left, right. Okay, so that all looks good. And then the motor. Let's turn it this way. Now that battery is just at storage level right now. And I think it'll just about hover. Yeah, it'll just about hover at a storage level charge. So I think it's gonna have I think it's gonna have plenty of power. Okay, now what I wanted to show you with the um, gyro, because I've got it in full manual mode right now. Okay, so now I've got the gyro activated, and so you see I roll it right and the left aileron is coming up. Roll the left, the right aileron is coming up, so that's doing what it should. And then on the yaw, if I yaw to the right, the rudder goes to the left. If I yaw to the left, the rudder goes to the right. Okay, now watch the elevator. I go down and it pushes it down further. I go up and it pulls it up further. So, yeah, the problem is the location of the control horn. Like I said, I didn't even think about that until I started testing the gyro modes. And I was like, oops. So that's why that has to be relocated. The linkage and the control horn on, on the elevator needs to be relocated. I mean, put my safety switch on, on the motor. But uh, man, is that, that's gonna be a lot quieter playing now, right? Rather than that brushed motor gearbox, I'll tell you. And it's gonna have a lot more power. It's gonna be a little bit heavier, but we'll see how that works out. But anyway, what I was saying is I can't guarantee anything um, let me put this back in manual mode. I can't guarantee anything. I never know if this is going to be a success or a failure until I go out and launch it the first time. The, the one plane that reminds me of, of the unexpected consequences uh, when you launch something the first time was the P50, the Volantex P51D 750 millimeter wingspan Mustang. And um, I had nosed that in hard. I had a, either a receiver error, a receiver problem with it, or a, a servo. And I, I kind of think it was a servo because if it had been the receiver, unless the receiver completely shut down, it, it should have gone into fail safe and it didn't. So I kind of feel that I, I had a servo hang up on it. But anyway, it nosed in hard. It broke, I busted up that plastic. Um, motor mount on the front of it and I didn't care for the motor that they had in it anyway so so I fabricated a new mount and I put in a new motor that is going to have a lot more torque than the stock one that came with it so that and I was setting it up to fly on 3S instead of 2S well I didn't think about how much I had changed not the not the thrust angle on the motor but the thrust line the thrust line I think my thrust line was much lower after I had rebuilt it, then, then the, where the thrust line was stock. And so even though I had in some down angle and some right angle in the motor, when I launched it, I mean, you would have thought that it was extremely tail heavy. That motor was just pulling the nose up to the sky and it was everything I could do to get it back down on the ground in one piece. Now, if you guys have watched the way that it flies now, after I really went back and modified the thrust angle on the motor, I couldn't change the thrust line. But to compensate for that, I had to put a lot more down angle on the motor. But you see how that flies now. But that could have been a complete disaster. And so this one could turn out the same way. You just never know. Especially since I, there's no way for me to save it with the gyro because I can't turn the gyro on until I get the elevator linkage and control horn boot. So. So it's going to be full manual mode, but uh, we'll take it out and we'll test it if I have the weather available before I have time to do this. So stay tuned. It certainly is the probably the absolute cleanest 
brushless conversion that I've done so far, but that's because the way the plane is put together. It made it a lot easier to do. That plus, plus the brush to brushless module, don't forget about that. There are links to that stuff in the show notes. To the module, to the plane, I think I have a couple of links in there too to the V761 board, the proper one, the one that you can mount, you know, right side up. So, but I wanted to make you aware of this issue here. So if you do decide to use that brick in this plane for a brushless conversion, I wanted you to realize that you were going to have to modify that. Okay, so anyway, stay tuned and we'll see if this is going to be a success or a failure, who knows. Never know until you launch it. So thanks for watching, and I will see you in the air.